So far on this enchanting journey around the ecological wonderland that is our shoreline, we have seen the great barren vistas of the Namakwa coast. We've meandered through the forested gorges of the Garden Route. But even those awe-inspiring panoramas are completely paled by the sheer beauty and scale of what we are about to encounter. 250 kilometers of rugged, spectacularly unequaled subtropical seascape. Welcome to the Wild Coast. And joining me is our usual team of experts, checking their sleeping bags and making sure they've packed extra batteries. It's a nice catch. Marine biologist Eleanor gets hooked on a seal account and gets down and dirty in a mangrove swamp. It's thick, it's sticky, it's stinky, and in some parts of the mangrove, it's incredibly hard to walk in. Archaeologist Gavin walks in the footsteps of a 200,000-year-old child. Historian Numalunga revisits a pivotal moment in Kosa history, Non Kwawuse and the cattle killing while guest storyteller Max Dupree returns with a tale of prophets and cattle resurrected from a cavern in the ground. And New Jack and I will be sharing a beach with some very laid-back sun seekers. It's a coast of untamed beauty, of ancient myths and intriguing legends. Join me for a walk on the wild side. We've reached one of the most naturally beautiful stretches of our shoreline, but we've also entered a landscape that has helped shape our modern history. This is the birthplace of Steve Biko and Nelson Mandela, titans of our democracy. And as guest storyteller Max Dupree has come to reveal, the tradition of great leaders stretches back centuries. This is the story of one of the most remarkable characters that ever lived in these parts in the Eastern Cape. He was two meters tall, built like a gymnast, very powerful man, bearded, piercing eyes, hypnotic voice. At least that's the description we have, because I'm talking about the late 1700s, early 1800s here. He was a man who very nearly changed the entire history of Southern Africa radically. His father called him Makanda, the one who grinds the maize. When his father died, his mother, who was Koi, abandoned the young Makanda. He then left the kraal and went to live in the felt, like, a John, like John the Baptist of old, where he lived off berries and roots, the occasional rodent and, and, uh, and a bird. He was a very, very intelligent man, so his long period of solitude gave him enough time to ponder the big questions of life. 